focus on progress, not popularity. When we focus on looking perfect, getting everyone to like us, I can tell you from firsthand experience, you lose out on opportunities to get better. Welcome to Beyond the Ball Podcast. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? And welcome to another episode of Beyond the Ball. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones. And man, we're, we're diving right in. We're just going right. We're going right in. We're going right after it. Uh, first, first and foremost, before we even do the introduction, I'm excited because I have, I have my book here. This book, Compete Every Day. I have my book, and I'm excited to have the author of Compete Every Day. He's a speaker, and he's a phenomenal coach. Without Further ado, Mr. Jake Thompson. Jake, how are we doing, my man? Man, I'm great. I, I feel like we, we already had a show off air before we, we even jumped on air because <laughs> we just, we get along so well. We talk so well about just, man, aligned vision, aligned passion for helping others. So this is going to be fun for the listeners today. Certainly, certainly, man. I know everybody always wants to be like the fly on the wall on those, you know, the, the, those conversations where, where people are always passionate and people are always just just driven. So I'm, I'm glad I'm glad to have you here today, Jake. I, I really am. This is long, long, <laughs> long overdue. And I know it's my fault. Um, so I'll, no, I'll, we're going to blame technology, it man. It was technology. <laughs> we couldn't get Zoom working. We are rocking and rolling today, though. Man, yeah, we... We're, we're, we're here now. We're, we're, we're here. But uh, man, J- Jake, so, so for those people who, do, who don't, you know, who don't know who you are, which is crazy if they don't, it's ridiculous. Uh, just, just give a quick snapshot. And just in case I missed anything on the introduction, just, just, sh- just share, share a little bit of, about yourself with the people. You, you, you nailed it. So I am the founder and CEO, as I call the chief encouragement officer at a company called Compete Every Day. Uh, We are essentially a media and apparel company that focuses on helping people figure out uh, how to build the mindset to achieve more and more importantly, lead more effectively in their work, their sports career, and their life. Uh, And so I have the chance to to go on podcast, uh, keynote speak similar to yourself all over the country. Uh, And then, yeah, my first book just came out this summer. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, so Jake, everybody always sees th- this type of stuff, you know, because people see the, the speaker on the stage. You're like, oh, man, look at Jake. Oh, it looks like he's doing all this stuff. He just came out of nowhere. But, but Jake, <laughs> what, what, what happens behind the scenes? Like, take us back, man. Take, like, like, take us back. Where did, where did this start from? Because you didn't just, 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 just start speaking and then, you know, then you just had all these engagements in your catching all these flights so so take take, take us back man i know right (laughs) (laughs) i wish it's like you know what i want to be a speaker today and all of a sudden the inbox is full yeah man i uh so i grew up thinking i was going to be the next jerry Maguire sports agent like that's what i was dead set on as a career and had the opportunity to intern and work under an agent for a few years uh during kind of the end of college and grad school and as i was finishing up grad school i realized i wanted no part of it and, and the industry, there are some amazing people in that industry. Unfortunately, the one I was working for just wasn't the best character, best individual. Uh, and I got a really sour taste for that space. And I knew if I didn't leave, I was going to lose the love of sports that I just had. Like uh, sports are my passion through and through. And, and I tell people all the time, football is, is the worst breakup I ever had. And I think as, as athletes, we can relate to it because it never ends when we want it to. Like we rarely yeah. ever get the John Elway, win the Super Bowl, retire when you want to. Most of us, it's injury. It's the game passes us by, you know, we're just not good, quite good enough for a certain level. But the relationship may be the hardest, but the lessons learned from it are the best you'll ever get. Sports teach us so many things. And so for me, you know, I got out of this career, I was kind of, career-wise loss for a few years. I just started freelancing marketing projects, basic graphic design, introduction, social media for companies, built a consulting business for a few years that wasn't as fulfilling as I'd hoped. Financially, it was great. Fulfillment-wise, very much lacked. And so I started toying with this idea of pursuing greatness in life. I was having conversations with friends about how they would just settle. Like, 
they were doing just enough to get by or they hope they do just enough to get this promotion. And, and it wasn't a whole lot of conversations around how can I do my absolute best? How can I go all out? Because as I remembered in sports growing up, like you could never have the attitude of I'm doing just enough and be great. Like that mm. just didn't happen. And I watched teammates that had immense talent take that attitude and, and they honestly never got to play at the next level like they should have. Like if they'd put in the work, you're like, man, you would have been a D1 athlete. You could have had a shot at the pros. And here I am, undersized kid, using competition to outwork people. Like that's what I was all about. And so I had this idea of competing every day and, and honestly had no clue what to do with it. I spent six to eight months trying things, trying to fit this brand message of competing every day around stuff, nothing fit. Eventually my best friend said, Hey, try t-shirts. He said, you have nothing to lose. There's a company out of Boston called life is good. He said, they have a really cool story how they sold it out of a van. I think you could just, you know, start selling it somewhere. And so luckily at the time, Shopify had just launched their e-commerce platform. So I grabbed the Shopify store, bought a couple of boxes of t-shirts and tanks, and then just started selling them, honestly, out of the back of my car behind a gym in North Dallas to anyone that would pay enough attention to me. I thank God for the friends that were like, we feel sorry for you a little bit. Like we're going to buy you and support your shirts. We love this stuff, this message. <laughs> and eventually little by little, it started to grow and it, but it took years and it took years to get up and off the ground. You know, I don't even think we really got a stride on the apparel side to like 2013. And then I really felt like we started to grow. Um, but as you, you know, start growing as a company, you start growing in your career, you figure out what you want to do and what you don't want to do. And when I started the brand as the apparel, I was like, we're going to be big. We're going to be like, life is good. We're going to sell t-shirts, coffee mugs, and hats and all that. And then I started going down that path and talking to friends and talking to our team internally, the contractors and people that work part-time or full-time. And we figured out that our brand advantage was the message. More importantly, how I told this message, how I taught mm. people what it meant to compete. So we had to start reevaluating what the company was going to look like long term. And, and so about 2015, companies started just asking me to come speak. Had no idea what they wanted me to talk about. I just was like, <laughs> yeah, sure, I'll come talk for free. You bought some t-shirts, what do you want? And you're up there kind of winging it for the most part. You have an outline, you're kind of looking at notes, but no idea about the speaking industry, no idea about you know writing books, all of that. And But I enjoyed it. And the mm. first big gig was a Texas Children's Hospital in Houston. And I tell the VP, Linda Aldred, who I'm still friends with to this day, that like I owe her so much because between her and, and a, one of our customers, Samantha McCain, who ran a, a PR event in Mississippi, like they were the ones that kind of pushed me, for lack of a better word, down this path. Uh, because Linda hired me in 2015 to come speak. Afterwards, she was like, you need to do more of that. And I was like, eh, no big deal. I'm, I'm selling t-shirts. <laughs> and then we get through 2015 and into 2016 and I start seeing the landscape change of where we sold. We sold a lot in CrossFit, fitness event races. Mm -hmm. And I said, we can't do this long term. There is going to be a market change and like we can't bank on just this space. And so we started looking at how do we grow the brand? And for us that looked at speaking, it looked at the podcast. It kind of started going down that route, a very similar route to what, what you've built and how you've built your career, which is amazing. And so we started putting in the work for it. And 2017 was the year that essentially I made big gambles uh, that didn't quite pan out, but I made big gambles that said, we're going to go all in on the events in this space this year. And then we're completely out in 2018. Our goal mm -hmm. is to almost at the same time we're investing heavily here is to turn the ship entirely. And so what that does is that's a two to three step backwards. Wow. And we took a punch in 2017 and 2018 from the apparel side. And from the outside, it looked like business was in a bad spot. But at that same time, I had invested working with the speaking coach and team. Samantha McCain, who I'd mentioned, had reached out, had been a loyal customer, said, hey, I want you to come keynote our event in Mississippi. And it was the first time I ever got paid to go speak. And mm -hmm. when I left, she was like, you need to be asking for more money. You need to be doing more of this. And I laughed. I was like, well, I've been working with this group. And she's like, do more of it. And at that point, I was like, okay, it may feel like we're floundering. It may feel like we took two steps backwards, but like this is the long-term best decision for us. And 2020 now, looking back, oh my gosh, it was the best move because it allowed us really this year, despite everything going on, like to still continue to grow 
mm-hmm. which you wouldn't have thought, but we've continued to grow and kind of develop uh, because we took a few steps backwards. We shifted from being just t-shirts to really focusing on how do we teach people how to live like this and going that direction. And so that's kind of where we, we've gone and pivoted. And so it wasn't an overnight. It's almost, you know, nine, 10 years in the making. Um, but you just kind of got to jump in, figure out what you do well, figure out what you don't do well, do more of what you do well and do less of what you don't do well. And you don't ever know that until you take action. Mm. Wow. Well, I, I think you, you said so much, you said so much in that, Jake, that, I mean, that, that's profound because one, I did not know that, that, that the brand has been alive and kicking for, for knocking on 10 years. And if you looked at some of those old pictures, you'd be like, wow, how did you, how are you still kicking? Cause I look at them. I look at our old trade show, show booths and I send people pictures. I was like, this is what I started with. This is horrible, but we started it. So you got to start at something. Wow. Yeah, I think one one of the biggest things that I just took away from what you what you just said is, is the fact that is, I mean, and and no, you know, I mean, I mean, no disrespect by it, but it's ugly in the beginning. Like branding, oh, the the presentations. I mean, whatever it is, wherever anybody is in the beginning, it's not gonna be it's not gonna be crisp and and clear, and you know, you're gonna have like stitched shirts and embroidered things and all that other type stuff. But you don't know it until you start doing it. It's like, it's it's you and I speaking like my first keynote, I think about it now and I'm like, "Mm," I would change a lot of those stories. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have taken as many risks. And now like I'm constantly thinking through things and, and saying, how do we refine our message? How do we improve this? It's not like I feel like we're finished or we're polished, but it's like, how do you make the little tweaks but that's all I've been doing for 10 years. So when someone looks at the brand now and they're like, oh my gosh, you guys have it all together, whatever. I'm like, dude, we've just been modifying and tweaking and saying, how do we say this just a little bit better? How do we tweak this just a little bit more? And you go back in our Google history and everything else and you look at the old shirts and the old designs, you're like, eh, it's not that good. But that's okay because you should always be like, looking back, you should always be embarrassed of the first version. And, mm. and I laughed about it this morning because I got challenged really just seeing a couple of friends that are big runners. And I'm like, I really need to run more. Like I just hate Mm. running. And I was like, my new office is like two and a half miles from the house. So I'm going to, I told my wife, I was like, I'm going to run there. I'm going to handle some emails and orders. I'm going to run back. She's like, okay, good luck. (laughs) So this morning strapped on the shoes and ran. I got about like 60, 70% of the way there. And I was like, I got to walk for a minute. And so I walked for a little bit and I started running again until I got to the office finished everything. And then I was like, Oh man, I got to run back. And as I'm running back, I got to that point where I maxed out and I started thinking, I was like, man, this is the same thing in business. Mm. Like you just start ugly and you're not going to get it all the way done. And it's not going to look as pretty as someone else does or how you had it in your head, but you don't get better at running unless you just run. You don't get better at business. You don't get better in your career. Heck, most of us, if we're thinking about as an athlete or in sports, we were not very good with our sport when we started. Like the things we can accomplish now, we were not that adept with when we started, but we kept practicing, kept working. And that's, I mean, that's life. And that's what nobody tells you because we look on Instagram and social media and TikTok and we see perfection and we assume it's always that easy or it always happened that way. And if I can't do it that way, I shouldn't do it. But man, every success story, every person's business, go back to day one. And if they tell you day one was perfect and pretty, they are lying to you to sell you something. Otherwise the genuine people are going to say, man, here's how it is. Here's how ugly it was, but here's how we got past it. Man. Yeah. So, so, so good. So good. Jake talk. So talk a little bit about, about the mindset that you had to go all the way in. Cause cause you, cause you were, you were sharing your story and, and you were just talking about how you all made the shift. But, but what type of mindset like were you in? If you can just go back and just think about that a little bit. Fear? Uh, no, I mean, honestly, like, <laughs> at, so I had, I had launched the brand Compete. And one of my, right before I launched it, I was consulting. And one of my biggest clients was a startup and they went out of business. Mm-hmm. So all of a sudden, I had still a few small clients, but my big client was gone. And so now I have like, I have time. I have no excuses. Let's make this go. And so I was doing it as a side hustle, still consulting, still working part-time, still running through things for a couple of years. 
And then we got to a point where I just started phasing out the consulting until I had one client left. And honestly, that client was paying just enough where I could get by every month on it. And everything I was making from compete, we'd pour back into the business, pour back into the business. Well, eventually that contract ended with the client and they wanted to renew at a smaller rate. And I was like, man, that's too much work for that. I was like, I got to go all in now. And so at that point I was all in with compete. And so you take it and run with it. And then, you know, like I said, we hit 2017 and everything starts to shift. And so for me to make sure team members get paid, I took on some side consulting projects. So like me having a little more expertise and experience of like, Hey, here's how you're going to run your Facebook ads campaign, or here's how you'll brand it and whatnot. Like I could do a little bit of that. And at the time, like I, I did a few podcast episodes on it at the time. I was like, man, this is embarrassing. I don't want to talk about this consulting stuff or this coaching stuff on the side. Like I want everybody to think like this is competes rolling. And then in the back of my head, I start hearing my own voice being like, are you crazy? Like, you said you would do whatever it takes to make this succeed. Yeah. Are you going to let your pride stop that? And that's something that got me of like, man, you're in it. You go all after it. Like at that point, do you care more about making progress, getting better or what other people think? And for me, I was like, I care about making this win because I see the impact this makes on others. And that's more important to me than just trying to look popular. So like there have been different points financially where I've gone all in. Um, and honestly, I'll tell you that the mental one, the mental one always goes back to me to 2013. Uh, I invested heavily in two events, both bombed, uh, lost wow. a lot of money. And I left the first one driving from LA to Vegas. And I laugh because if you've ever driven LA to Vegas, on a Friday, it's really fun because everybody goes to LA to Vegas for the weekend. But if you're on Sunday night, which is when I was, mm. all the headlights are coming at you. Nobody's going out into the desert with you. And it's ghostly. And I'm driving Sunday night. And I'm thinking about how much money I just lost. And I'm a little bit panicked. And I'm like, maybe I should just quit. Like, maybe I should sell what I have left, get a good job, pay off my debt, like call it a day. And this conversation popped up in my head with a buddy that we still laugh about to this day of when I first started the business, he asked me, he's like, how's it going? Yeah, it's okay. I said, it's not going nearly as well as I thought. I'm not making as much money as I thought I would. And he said, well, that's good because you are your own worst accountability. And I was like, mm. what? And he said, well, you have this message that says compete every day. That means no matter how hard it gets, no matter what odds you're up against, you show up as your best, you give your best and you keep fighting. He said, so that means you can't quit. You can change the business. You can pivot how you do things, but you cannot abandon the brand because at that point, You've told everyone who's bought something from you or bought into the message that oh. what you said was a lie. Oh. And I was like, man, talk about conviction. Like that's worse than like the preacher preaching from the pulpit calling you out. And I remember him telling me that and kind of laughing about it. And then, you know, flash forward two years, driving through the desert, I'm trying to talk myself into quitting. Like, how do I get out of it? And that conversation popped up in my head. And it suddenly went from a, how do I quit? How do I get out of this? To how do we fix this? How do we make things better? And, and that really changed my mindset in the middle of that muck for the rest of that year and the next year that helped us climb out of it, of just like, how do we approach getting out of it? Like, how do we go after this? How do we attack this? Quit worrying about quitting. How do we focus on improving? Man, man. Oh my goodness. Wow. Wow. That, and it, it, it's amazing how much power really is in words. So I just... I, I, I just finished listening to another book the other day uh, about the, the, the magic of thinking big and just the perspective about shifting your words and thought process. Uh, it's, it's just amazing. But, but anyway, 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 pivot, pivot. So I, I want to pivot. And I want to dive. I want to dive right okay. here for, for, for a second, Jake. I want to, I want to just talk. I want to pull out a few of my favorite points and I want you just to, to volley back and forth here with me. Let's do it. So, so I, I want you to talk a little bit about, I want you to talk a little bit about, about the Sabin way. Oh, man. So I, I actually found that in the book, uh, Fourth and Goal Every Day. Uh, and it's by mm -hmm. uh, Phil Savage, who's a former general manager of Cleveland Browns and a few other teams. It's a lifelong relationship with Nick Saban. And essentially what it came down to is Nick Saban, one of the greatest college football coaches of all time. Mm -hmm. He has a very particular way he goes and picks players for Alabama. You would think that he just looks at rankings and says, okay, these are the guys I want. They're the top rated. 
but he will like watch guys walk through a hallway in a school and see how they walk, how they carry their weight, how well they move. And because he wants guys with certain ankle mobility, he wants guys with certain flexibility. If you are an offensive lineman, you have to be a certain size and weight. Like he has very specific measurements because in his head, this fits his system. This is what makes winners. And, and it was drafted out of something that Gil Brandt, who's a, a very famous NFL GM used with the Cowboys in the 60s. Like they had a playbook that says running back should be this size, this weight, and this speed. And if they're not in that, we don't want them. And so you rarely ever see wow. the guys at Alabama that are the undersized players that are become stars because Saban's looking for a very specific one. And the point of that, and especially in that chapter, is you have to be very intentional with the type of people you look to hang out with. Because for a lot of us, we just associate with people we work with, live by, maybe work out with, we see on the team. And then we just spend more and more time with them without ever taking the time to be intentional and look at it and say, does this person exhibit the traits, the, the characteristics, the values of people that I want to be, want to be associated with, want to become? And if they don't, why do I keep trading time, aka trading my life, to spend mm. time with this person knowing they are essentially dulling me instead of sharpening me? Wow. Wow. And, 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 and he hearing you say that, that just makes me think of just every time we've hopped on, hopped on the Zoom, hopped on a call that you, I mean, your, your energy excites me. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I think that says a lot about you. And, and, and even just like you said, if, if we're not careful of who we're around, because we know who the people are that, that drain us and we know who the people are that are always doing this or always doing that. And, you know, if it's not positive, we know how we'll feel after our exchange are, you know, hanging out with that individual. But yeah, Jake. So basically what, what, what I'm saying is I, I like talking to you, man. Uh, man, we, we need to do it more <laughs> often. We probably should hit record on a few of our just jam sessions for people of like behind the scenes on business. But hey. th think, think about how many people listening to this, watching this that have been at home or quarantined or just haven't been out with friends and other people and are starting to realize like I'm in a more, positive mood now that I'm not around certain people like mm. I, I've got a friend that we work out with wow and at the very beginning when we kind of had a small group working out together still she was kind of a negative Nancy and, and I called her out on it one day and and one of the other people called and I was like listen the gym is like our safe space like take it and go home like if yeah. you don't like what we're doing go home like you can't bring it here and that was two months ago, two and a half months ago. And yesterday or day before I overheard her talking to one of the other girls and she's like, it's just amazing. Like I haven't been around certain people since, you know, February. And I just realized how negative they are and how much they drain me and how much I've been negative being around them. And I don't feel that way anymore. And I just ran into one of them and I'm like, oh my gosh, like I'm more intentional with it. And so she realized like the people she'd been around had been making her take on a negative attitude because they'd been influencing her. And she knows now, like, I'm not going to spend time with those people like I had. Whereas most of people listening to this, I hope is not the case, but most people out there, when life resumes, mm. they're going to go back to what they were doing. That's true. They're going to go back to hanging out with those same people. And then they're going to kind of get back into that same cycle, that same negative trap. And they're going to wonder why. Well, I can tell you why. It's because you didn't take that same approach of what are the characteristics, the values, the things that I want with people I hang out with and start spending time with those people. Mm, yeah, gold, 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 Jake, gold. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now I, I want to I just, just bounce, bounce, bounce another point Let's because there, there's, there, there, there's, there's, so much, there's so much good stuff in here, man. There, there's, there's so much really good stuff in here. And I really like how after each chapter, you really, you really break down the takeaways. Yeah, I, I wanted to be intentional with that for a couple of reasons. Uh, the first being for a book, like the books that I've read, there's a, a couple of books that I've read that have really challenged the way I've thought. But the books that I feel like I can read time and time again are the ones that always give me something to do. Mm, like here's mm -hmm. something to implement. The One Thing by Gary Keller, Jay Papazan, Atomic Habits, like, there are things to actually run with it. And what I didn't want was a self-help leadership book that was all theory. I wanted someone to say, you know, here's this idea of outworking your talent and here's why it's important and here's what it matters. But 
here's how you actually do it in your career, in your life, health, mm -hmm. relationships, so that you see, hey, it's not just a really cool idea and then I don't know how to do anything with it. Because you know this as a speaker and I know this, like we want people excited when they leave, uh, leave the audience and leave the room with us, but we want them to have something to do so they don't walk out and be like, man, I'm fired up, but I don't know how to implement it. Like we want them to implement it because the implementation is how you change the life. And so for me, if they took one chapter and implemented one thing, that starts to build that little by little by little 1% better improvement every day that eventually compounds until the massive results. And so, yeah, the takeaways at the end were a big one for me. And it, it also challenged me to say, as I'm talking about these concepts, how would I implement it in my life? How can mm -hmm. I implement it in my life? And so that really helped me on my end to say, here's maybe how someone else can do it. De definitely. And, and, and even the, the great thing about that, because like you're talking about theories and then on the other side, the tangible application, the, the greatest piece I think about the tangible application is that when, they're, when, it, when it's a question more than a statement, that the person can always go back and ask that question again. They say, well, how can I implement this in my personal life? Just like you do with, with, with yeah. Compete Every Day. And then you say, well, how can I implement this in, you know, like working out and health and wellness? And then just like you said, so I can take something from one chapter, I apply it and I'm like, well, that was really good. But what was, what was I actually challenged to? Then I go back to the book and then get a different, different yep. step to implement somewhere else. So, I mean, I, I, I think, I think that's really great. I think that's Thanks, really man. great. And uh, where, where was that? Where was that? I just had it. Where was that? Sweep the parking lot, Jake. Oh Sweep man. The parking lot. So when I was a kid, I grew up in East Texas. I, my dad had a small chain of gas stations and on Saturdays I would have to go clean the parking lot what every little kid wants to do on Saturday morning instead of watching cartoons and playing yes. with friends. Um, yes. And so for me, I always had the idea of the, how fast can I get it done? Like the faster mm -hmm. I can get it done, the better for me. And dad would always like drag me back out there because he'd still find a smear on a gas pump I missed, or there'd be some trash left in the parking lot. And he would go over the importance of just doing the little things. Like you've got to clean everything. Like, if it takes you two hours to do your absolute best, it takes you two hours. But until you can be trusted to do the little things, you can't be trusted to do the big things. Because how you do the little things, how you do the big things, it's all the same. Like if you cut corners on the little things, you're going to cut corners on the big things. And so that was a very, very big one for me. And, and I laughed because at the same time, like he's teaching me that, he was also teaching me just the importance of, in my head, I had the idea of like, dad, you, you have staff, like there are people that are paid to do this. Why aren't they doing it? And he's like, well, I'm asking you to do it. And he said, I would get out and do it as well because you're never too big to do the little things. Like it doesn't mm -hmm. matter what your role is in an organization. If you're the team captain, or if you're last on the depth chart, like you're never too big to clean up after yourself, to pick up, to do things. It's why I go on my rants about shopping carts left out all by themselves oh, on their goodness. lonesome in the parking lot, because it's the same thing. Usually 99% of the time, it's someone with the mentality of it's someone else's job. They're paid. I'm going to let them do it. It's why we don't clean up bathroom sinks. It's, but those are little things because doing that, like literally the art of racking your shopping cart back when nobody's watching, nobody's going to know if you do it or if you don't do it, no one's going to applaud you or curse you. Like in those moments builds the integrity, the pieces, the character that you're going to need when life's harder challenges come because we don't just magically snap our fingers and build our grid or build our resilience or build our character. We do it from little bitty choices when nobody's watching on a daily basis. And so that, that was really the big one on the little things. It's about leading with your life and, and not your lips. Mm, wow. I've never heard it put like that before. Lead with your life and not your lips. I like that, Jake. Thanks, man. You know, I mean, it's easy. We talk, we talk big. It's, it's, we were talking about social media off air earlier and how like certain things, it's really hard to keep up with certain folks and they have, you know, teams behind the scene. And, but the biggest thing on social is like, it's really easy to talk a big game on there. It's really hard to live it through and through. And so like, it's great to post and encourage and inspire folks, but like our life and how we live is always more mm. important because, it, you know, I talked to teachers the other day and I was telling them like, how many of y'all have little kids and you just let a curse word fly and they heard you and they repeated it, but you could teach them the same lesson. And it's going to go in one ear and out the other. But if you do something, they're going to watch you. 
They're going to see you. They're going to mimic that behavior. Like they don't, they care somewhat, especially the older they get, the less they probably listen to you, but the more they watch you. And so you can't tell them to be respectful to their sister if you're disrespectful to their mom. Like it just doesn't work that way. So like everything is about leading with life first and then lips. Man, go, Jake, I, I want to I hit, I want to hit one more. I want to hit one Let's more. Do it. We're going to, we're going to slide into the two minute drill. I want to, want to definitely honor your time, my man. And uh, I, I want you to talk, I want you to talk about hope not being a strategy. Man, this one is the one I love because for a lot of us, we have this idea that I hope I will be successful one day. I hope I get this done. I hope I do that. And most people just hope. They wish, they dream, Mm. they don't ever take action. Like hoping for something to happen isn't a way to get it done. You have to take action for it. And so we live in this world today, which it just shocks me of how many people believe they can sit back, dream of their success and it'll happen, hope for it, good things to happen to them, and then never take the steps to follow through with it. And part of the reason I think they do that is because it's a lot safer to hope for something to happen and it not happen than to take action and fall short. But what they don't realize is by taking action, even if you fall short, you get ahead. You're making progress. You're getting better. It's the idea we talked about at the beginning of the show. Like I couldn't hope to build a company one day. I actually had to do it. I had to do it Mm -hmm. ugly and I had to fail a few times, but I had to in each experience, get up, get going, keep getting better. So that's kind of the idea is hope is not a strategy. Hoping things don't get better, don't get better. I mean, from a faith perspective, there's the old phrase that, you know, pray as if everything relies on God and work as if everything relies on you. Mm. taking that approach that, you know, you believe it, you put your faith in in the higher power that, that he's going to come through. But at the same time, you don't sit back and wait on things like God may bring the rain, but unless you planted the seeds, there's nothing to harvest. Oh, Jake. Oh, pass the offering bucket around. (laughs) Oh, golly. Oh my goodness, Jake. Oh, Wow. So, so much good information here. So if, if you all have not got your book yet, if you have not purchased your copy, you definitely want to get your copy. The not so secret, the not so secret secret to winning in your work and life. Compete every day by the Jake Thompson. <laughs> I, I don't think it says the on the front, but I appreciate the preface. Uh, <laughs> oh man well you know i I, I was giving you the extra i was giving you i appreciate it oh man jake so before i let you go like i shared with you earlier uh just before we we hopped on uh this is this is a segment i like to call the two minute drill and 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 with the two minute drill what what we do is uh just just put you just like on football you know just a couple rapid fire questions like to have a little bit of fun uh like to get it going and then i will send you on your way so do it Jake, are you are you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's go. All right. Let's 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 roll. Let's roll and start now. Favorite food? Oh, Tex Mex. Oh, okay. What, what what dish would it be? Just chips and salsa. The endless supply of <laughs> chips and salsa. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, it's homemade mom's cookie dough. I eat it frozen. I don't even bake it. Oh, uh, nice. Okay. Uh, uh, favorite sport? Football. Mm, last book you read last book i actually am almost done like i've got 10 pages left of called survivor song and i heard about it on joe rogan's podcast and it's a little bit scary to read because it's about a, a rabies pandemic uh, but it's a fascinating fiction book so non-fiction uh i can't even think of the last book i read non-fiction um, i've got a giant stack right over here oh actually it was john gordon's book the guard so that was that was the last business development book uh but yeah reading took a break to read a fiction one to revive some creativity and i kind of regret reading it now because it's a little freaky (laughs) and then you're you're, (laughs) i'm telling you man rogan was like it's one of the best books but it's terrifying in the middle of a pandemic to read about a pandemic and i was like yeah it's not gonna be that bad oh it's that bad interesting and, and then, and then last, last question: what, what, What's your what's been your go to Netflix show of preference? Ooh, so The Office is still on there, so I feel like that's a safe Netflix one for me. But I really liked 
uh, Ozark, mm. and I like The Witcher. Oh, yeah, it okay. took me. It took me a little. So I, I wasn't sure on The Witcher uh, at first, uh, but it's a fascinating. If you watch it all the way through, I'm a big Game of Thrones guy. Okay. And so I was like, maybe it's gonna have that feel. And when I watched it, the way the first season wrapped up, it's a masterful storytelling. And I don't think you get how the different stories are aligning until like episode three or four. And then at that point I'm in. So yeah, so I like that one, but the office is kind of a go-to that I could always have on in the background, mainly from just how uncomfortable Steve Carell's character can make anyone watching. Oh my goodness. Oh my. So I, so I was late on the office, Okay. but uh, I started like season four with my wife. We watched it all the way through and then we started from the beginning and got caught up. We just got caught up like last night. So, so... yeah, the office is, the office is, is definitely, definitely my jam. Yeah. But Jake, that, that, that is the end of the two minute drill, but there's awesome. still these two questions I wanted to squeeze in these last Let's two questions. So the final, well, the first of the final two would, would be what's one tip that you would give to a student athlete? One tip, focus on progress, not popularity. When we focus on looking perfect, getting everyone to like us, I can tell you from firsthand experience, you lose out on opportunities to get better because you're just worried about messing up or not looking perfect or not having it all together. It's like what we talked about at the beginning. A lot of people don't start businesses, don't start blogs, don't start posting online because they can't look perfect from day one. But when you focus on progress, there's this funny thing that happens. If you answer the question, how do I get better today? And you just focus on that, not caring what anyone else thinks, you eventually get results. And the good thing about getting results is other people want to know how you got those results. So suddenly you get that popularity. You focus on popularity, you fail to get progress or results. You focus on progress, you get results. And eventually you most often get that popularity too. Wow. The way you broke that down. Everyone, everybody wants to know how a champion became a champion. Most people just don't want to do the work because it's little, it's mundane, it's monotonous, mm. it starts ugly, but everybody loves the champ. Wow. Wow. And then Jake, who, who's, who's one person that you would like to see? Who's one guest that you would like to see me interview next on Beyond the Ball? Oh man. I actually think Brian Levinson would be a fantastic one. Have you interviewed Brian before? No, no I have not. I have okay. Not. So this is a connection I'd love to make. Okay. Uh, Brian hosts the Intentional Performers podcast. He is a hmm. mental performance coach for athletes and executives out of the DC area. Uh, family has a rich sports background, uh, but he's a fantastic one that's all about the process and, and how we have, uh, from a sports standpoint, we have a process focus and practice and how we get better. And then we have the outcome focus on game day and how we flip our brains back and forth. So I think that would be a big one for those student athletes. For you, I think you just have a kick out of talking to Brian and he's a fun dude too. Excellent, excellent. And then Jake, where, where can everybody find you? How can they connect with you? Yeah, um, competeeveryday.com is, is your go-to source. You can find out about the book, the podcast, uh, apparel, everything, and then compete every day on social. Uh, we're on pretty much everything. So if you're on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, you name it. Follow us. If you'll shoot me a DM, say you heard about it here on Jonathan's podcast, I'll send you a little something as a surprise to help you with an order for a book or a shirt or something. Oh, wow. There, there, there it is. There it is. Jake, my man, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you hanging out and just, just drowning me in gems today. Dude, thanks for having me. It's always fun to hang out. We're going to have to at least catch up more often, maybe not on episodes, but just in life. De definitely, de definitely, de definitely. Well, my man, I I'll see you on the other side of the Zoom call. You bet. <laughs> and, and everybody, thank you for taking the time to listen. Be sure to, to follow and connect with Jake. Compete every day on everything, wherever you are. Compete every day is there, and Jake is there as well. So, ballers, until next time, be sure to uh, connect with us. You can follow me, Jonathan Jones Speaks, on everything. And my friends, be sure, be sure, be sure to pick up your copy of Compete Every Day. And then until next time, continue to ball, continue to be great, and continue to live your best life.